So in this question, the circuit shown consists of a parallel combination of two coils of inductances L and 2L and there is a resistance R. Now initially currents of equal magnitude I0 are flowing in the coils in the same direction. So these coils had initial current I0. How much charge will flow and how much heat will be dissipated in the resistance over long period after this initial instant. So first of all let's analyze this question. In the indu inductor initially there was current I not flowing in the same direction. So this was the current suppose if we write this is the current I0 and suppose this was the current I0. So initial current I0 in both the inductors in the same direction. So we have assumed I0 and I0. Now the first mistake that we might do is how much suppose we have to calculate the heat dissipated. So we might think there is a resistance so all the energy will be lost and if we write initial energy as half L I0 square plus half 2L into I0 square. So this is the initial energy and we, if we assume that final all the energy is lost so this will be the heat dissipated will be is equal to initial energy because we are assuming that final energy is zero all energy is lost but we cannot be certain about this we cannot be certain that final energy is zero because we are not sure if final current will be zero or not so this is a common mistake that students might do assuming that final energy is zero and just calculating the initial energy and comparing it with the heat loss heat loss is the initial energy so let's see whether the final current will be zero or not. So at any time, let's assume current in this inductor is I1. In this inductor, it's I2. And here it will be flowing I1 plus I2. Now somehow we have to find the current as a function of time so that we can see what will be the final current at time t is equal to infinity. Now one important thing here is if you look carefully, the potential difference across these inductors, this inductor and this in inductor will always be same and that will also be equal to potential difference across the resistor. So if these points are x, this will be x, this will be x, potential x and here the potential is y, this will be y, this will be y. So v across inductor first, v across 2L and v across R, this is all equal. So we can get the equation. L di1 by dt is equal to 2L di2 by dt is equal to minus i1 plus i2 into r. See, if you see why we have written the signs like this, for this inductor, we have assumed that current is flowing in this direction. So we see inductor will behave as a EMF like this. So this side is high potential, this side is low potential and we know magnitude of E is L di by dt. So we have written L di by dt. Basically this is Vx minus Vy. Same for the inductor 2 also and for the resistor the current is going like this I1 plus I2 in the upward direction. That means this part is high potential and the above one is low potential. And here we are writing Vx minus Vy. So this thing that we are writing is, this is the potential difference which is Vx minus Vy. So Vx minus Vy is LDI by dt. Vx minus Vy here is 2LDI2 by dt. And Vx minus Vy here is minus of I1 plus I2 into R. So using the first two equalities, we have LDI1 by dt is equal to 2L d i2 by dt so dt gets cancelled l gets cancelled and let's integrate now the initial limit for the current i1 was i0 so we will write i0 to the final oppose we have current at some instant of time i1 and for 2l also initial was i0 and final suppose it's somewhere near i2 so we have i1 minus i0 is equal to 2 times i2 minus i0. Thus we get a relation between i1 and i2. So i1 is equal to 2 i2 and minus 2 i0 plus i0. So basically minus i0. 
now let's find the current as a function of time so the equality that we are we are using now is first and the third one so we have l d i1 by dt is equal to minus of i1 plus i2 into r and now we know the relation of i2 and i1 so we can replace i2 from this equation here i2 will be i1 plus i0 by 2 and we will put it here so we will get L di by dt is equal to minus i1 plus i1 plus i0 by 2 into r. On further simplifying this, we will get L di1 by dt is equal to minus 3 i1 plus i0 by 2 into r. Taking i1 term towards di and dt towards the right side, so we will get something like this. di1 by 3 i0, 3 i1 plus i0 is equal to minus r divided by 2L into dt. And let's integrate these terms. And the I1 limit was from I0 to I1 and here from 0 to T. So we will get ln 3 I1 plus I0 divided by 3 limits I0 to I1 is equal to minus R by 2L into T. So on further putting the upper limit and the lower limit, we will get ln 3 i1 plus i0 divided by 4 i0 is equal to minus 3 r by 2 l into t. So thus we have the equation of i1. Now once we have i1 we can find the value of i1 at t is equal to infinity. So at t tends to infinity after a very long time we will have 3 i1 plus i0 is equal to 4 i0 e to the power minus infinity. So this terms becomes 0. So we have i1 is equal to minus i0 by 3. So we see that finally at time t tends to infinity after a very long time i1 is not 0. Still the current is minus i0 by 3. And with the equation of relation between i1 and i2 we can also find i2. So i2 would be i1 plus i0 divided by 2. So this will give us minus i0 by 3 plus i0 divided by 2. So that is equal to i0 by 3. So we see i2 is i0 by 3 and i1 is minus i0 by 3. This means finally in the circuit at t tends to infinity current would be something like this i1 is minus, minus i0 by 3. So minus means in the opposite direction. So here it will be flowing something like this i0 by 3 then i2 it's i0 by 3 so here it's flowing like this i0 by 3 so if you see the current is flowing somewhere like this i0 by 3 and i0 by 3 here so now in the final state also you can see there will be some energy left so this was the case at t is equal to infinity so final energy is not equal to zero because we have these currents in the inductors. So this will have some final energy. We knew the initial energy. So difference between these energies can give us the heat loss. So let's calculate that. So here we had initial energy as half L I naught square plus half 2 L I naught square, which gives us half 3 L I naught square. And our final energy here is half L I naught by 3 square plus half 2L I naught by 3 square which is half 3L I naught square by 9. So this is the initial energy, this is the final energy. So heat loss will be initial energy minus final energy. Initial energy must be more and final energy is less. So heat loss is initial energy minus final energy which is equal to half 3L I0 square 1 minus 1 by 9. So this is 8 by 9 and this gives us 4L I0 square divided by 3. So this is our final answer. Heat loss is 4L I0 square divided by 3. Now comes the part when we have to calculate the 
charge that flow through the resistance. So let's see how do we find that. Now to find the charge flow, first of all we have to find the current through the resistor and current through the resistor is I1 plus I2. So current through the resistor is I1 plus I2. And we know I2 is equal to I1 plus I0 by 2. So let's write it in terms of I1 only. So this will be I1 plus instead of I2 we will write I1 plus I0 divided by 2. So this will give us 3 I1 plus I0 by 2. So this is the total current. IR is equal to 3 I1 plus I0. So 3 I1 plus I0 is nothing but 4 I0 e to the power minus 3 R by 2 L into T and 3 I1 plus I0 divided by 2. So this is IR and I we can write as dQ by dt. So this will give us the result of charge that flows. So let's see. So this is dQ by dt is equal to 2 I0 e to the power minus 3 R divided by 2 L into T taking dt towards the right side. So 2 I0 e to the power minus 3 R by 2 L into T into dt and let's just integrate this from 0 to Q and time 0 to infinity. So, so charge that flows will be Q is equal to 2 I0 e to the power minus 3 R by 2 L into T divided by minus 3 R divided by 2 L and limit from 0 to infinity. On putting the limits, Q will be 4 L I naught divided by 3 R. So this is the charge that flows through this resistor R in after a long time or during this long time of infinity 4 L I naught by 3 R.